So words change, is my point, like the word handicapped. Right? Again, traditionally, that was the politically correct term, the all-inclusive term for cripples and shit, right? <laughs> but then they went, no, we want to be disabled. They didn't want to be disabled. They said, <laughs> said they said, <laughs> they said, well, we want to be referred to as disabled. We don't like the term handicapped anymore. Stop using it. Say disabled. And we went, okay, fine. And that's great. Just tell me the rules. And In fact, I'm a stickler for the rules. Like, if I was on a beach and a woman came running up and went, help, help, my handicapped toddler's drowning. I'd go, sorry, you're what, love? What? <laughs> my handicapped toddler's drowning and he can't swim. Whoa. Do you mean your disabled toddler is drowning? She'd go, yeah. I'd go, right. Well, let's... Oh, dead. <laughs> Wasted too much time being woke, didn't I? Well, I am woke now, and I can prove it. Here you go. I love illegal immigrants. Yeah, sue me now. I, sometimes I go down to Dover for the day, right? And I, I look out, right? I look, look for a boat, and I see a dinghy with about 60 of them, and I go over here, like, right? And I pull them in, I pull them into shore, and I go, women and children first. They go, there are no women and children. Just you lads, is it? Just come on, lads. Come on, lads. If I go down there one day and there's no boat, I am absolutely fucking gutted. I don't... I just sort of wander into town and I, I stand by the traffic lights and I wait for a big lorry to pull up, right? And I look underneath and there's a lad sort of clutching like that. And I go, where are you headed? And he goes, Gary Lineker's house. I go, it's just down there. <laughs> yeah. Fuck borders. Fuck, we don't need borders, do we? Be like the Vikings. They didn't care about borders, did they? I've got a little bit of Viking blood in me. Well, we all have, because of all the raping they did. <laughs> they say it was raping and pillaging, but I think it was mainly for the raping. I think they added the pillaging bit for the wives. I mean, they went down one day and went, right, we're off to Great Britain. Oh, why? Just a bit of pillaging. <laughs> Just pillaging. Just pillaging, babe. <laughs> all right, why are you wearing your rape hat? So this show is called Armageddon, and it's all about how I think humanity might end, because there's a long list of possibilities, you know. We're on a precipice, you know. Um, it could be uh, anything from global warming, the rise of the, the pandemic, you know, um, nuclear war, our own stupidity, basically. Because we are getting more stupid as a species, no doubt about that. You can now do a university degree course in Taylor Swift. <laughs> how fucking low academically can you go? There's an institute in London called the School of Flower Arranging. I went past it, I couldn't believe it. School of Flower Arranging. I looked in and there's people having lectures. Flower arranging. My mum used to pick flowers every day from the garden, cut flowers, put them in vases around the house. At no point did anyone come round and go, what unqualified cunt did these? <laughs> uh, yeah, the earth is in a terrible mess and it's my fault, my generation's fault, and the generation before, the boomers, with their deforestation and their fossil fuels, ruining the ozone layer, raising the temperature by a few degrees, so parasites, you know, bacteria, and the, the zootropic pandemics are just gonna get worse and worse. Like, if you're 20 years old now, you're gonna have a very different middle age to me. I've had the best 60 years of civilization, right? But if you're 20 now, in 40 years' time, you're gonna be in your house, wearing a mask, crying. <laughs> like you do now over jokes. And I'm not going to be around to see that, but I'm going to spend my entire fortune from now on on private jets to make sure it definitely fucking happens. <laughs> we're going to be the first generation that future generations are jealous of, right? Because we had it all, and we're using it all up. We're using up all the fresh water. We're using up all the fossil fuel, right? Usually you look back in history and you feel sorry for it. You go, oh, how did they live like that? Oh, how did they get around? No indoor toilets. I've got nine toilets in my house. Um, <laughs> And sometimes I just run around flushing them for a laugh. <laughs> just so that in 40 years' time, Greta Thunberg has to shit out of a window. <laughs> I've got 28 radiators. I always have them on full. Then I put the air con on full. And it sort of settles at about 20 degrees. It's lovely. It's how the cat likes it. She loves it at 20 degrees. And I, I spoil my cat. Um, 
I love cats. I love having a cat. Think about, uh, cats are great, but if you let them out, they bring home the most disgusting things. Last week, mine brought home a scouser with herpes. <laughs> and it wasn't quite dead, so I had to get it by its legs and crack its head against the table. <laughs> And who cares? If humanity was wiped out today, the Earth would return to a paradise in a few hundred years. If we lose bees, we're a desert forever. We're not that important. We're just one species of narcissistic ape. And some people on social media get annoyed when I say we're apes, you know, religious types, Americans. Um, <laughs> one bloke said to me, speak for yourself, dude. I ain't no ape. And I said back, well, you are, because we're all apes. He went, nah, what's a gorilla ever done? We've walked on the moon. I sent back, what do you mean we? You've done fuck all. <laughs> You've spelt moon wrong. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it, when people take credit for the sort of rest of the species, because that's what's pushed civilization forward, you know, a few geniuses along the way. Like, there's eight billion people on this planet, most of us do nothing. We eat shit and die. Like, if there was a meteor heading towards Earth to definitely destroy it, four billion people would get down on their knees and pray to their particular god, and a few hundred scientists would work out how to get Bruce Willis up there to stop it. <laughs> it's an odd concept, praying for me. I can't work out how God decides. All those people praying at once for different things. Is it like best idea wins, or is it a democracy? Like he puts things at each issue, he goes, right, votes for and against, you know. If it's a democracy, we're in trouble. We're a tiny nation. Like next time there's a flood warning in the West Country, if we're all going, oh, I hope everyone's okay. If the whole of China is going, yeah, fuck Bristol. <laughs> There's a billion of them. Oh, yeah. More about China later. <laughs> yeah, I've always uh, found praying quite strange. Like, if I bump into a friend or neighbour, and I know they've got a little kid, and I go, oh, how's so-and-so? And I go, oh, I'm not good. Um, he's in intensive care. Uh, we don't know if he's going to pull through, but I pray every night. What I do as an experiment, I go home, and I pray twice that he doesn't make it. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> On a serious note, um, I've been doing a lot of video messages recently for terminally ill children, and um, only if they request it, obviously. I don't, <laughs> I don't burst into hospitals and go, wake up, baldy. <laughs> Look, me twerking on TikTok. Look. No, um, I did a lot through the pandemic, presumably because they couldn't even see their own family. And uh, it's through Make-A-Wish Foundation. Do you know the charity Make-A-Wish Foundation? They're great, and they give these dying kids their, like, one wish. And if it's me, I always say yes, and I always start the video the same way. I go, why didn't you wish to get better? 